we do have a quorum. If Monette's going to be running the meeting, if you want to call to. Um, I call the Board of Library Trustees meeting to order. Okay. Um, let me pull up the agenda. Um, <clears throat> does anyone have any questions about the minutes? I thought the minutes looked good. And Amy, just as a follow up on the minutes, um, a lot of the questions that I was asking you were yep. answered in the minutes. So I That's... just needed to read back through on those details. And so I still have a couple of lingering questions, yep. um, but I just need to go back through um, and order it for myself. And I'll, I'll give you a shout out on that. That would be perfect. Thank you very much. Other than that, I thought the minutes looked good. Okay. On the bottom of page one, mm -hmm. uh, three lines up, um, it it starts with resulted in the formation of Reading and Prices Diversity ah. was was formed. I think shouldn't be there. Okay. Because um, you've already said it's in the formation of, so it just felt like that wasn't supposed okay. to be there. Maybe as a private group. Um, got it. Um, and also, I, I wondered, down at the bottom of page two, where it talks about Mr. Lelesher informed the Board of Trustees, the position would be added to the overall library budget. And I, I don't remember the exact wording, but I think, would it be good to note there that he also said that he would be committed to finding um, or securing funding for that position so it doesn't come out of the existing library budget? Sure. Um, Michelle, can you make notes to amend that paragraph? I thought that amend. he said that the town would appropriate funds to the library budget specifically directed for this position. Yeah. I well, thought I, I thought there was some there was some phrase that he used that it would be a something something. You know, it was, okay. I it it. I didn't understand it at the time. I, I don't think I heard it correctly, but it, it sounded like it was not quite, um, I, I don't know. I'm not sure where the funding was, was gonna okay. be. Okay, how about then we, we can table the minutes um, in terms of um, pending review and, and put them forth. I mean, they were submitted as draft. They're, they're, they exist as draft form. It sounds like for the most part, it's okay with one correction and, a clarification on Mr. Lelasher's comment, um, which we can go back to the recording and we can check um, and then present the minutes for approval, um, uh, the amended minutes for approval at the November meeting. Does it sound like a plan? It does. And Alice, Do I, need to I would just, um, I don't, we're not motioning to, I don't know, you've taken the open meeting law classes <laughs> more recently than I have. I think we can motion to table the minutes pending corrections. Yes, that sounds like what we can do. Do I have a motion for tabling the minutes pending corrections? So moved. Oh. Second. Second. And I think you have to do a roll call. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Yep. Um, I'll go in the order that I see people. Alice? Cherry? Yes. John? Yes. Andrew? And I'm a yes. Okay. So, you know, Andrew, I don't think we can hear you. I'm not sure. <clears throat> no, nope. still can't. No luck? Yes, now we can. Yes, now we can. Great. So just for the recording, Andrew, I'll have you give your, your vote again. Ah, we lost oh, you again. We lost you again. Yes. Okay, thank you. And I'm a yes. All right, thank you very much. Um, there were, as of five o'clock today, there were no requests for public comment. Um, we are following the um, select board 
protocol. I don't know if you read that in the in the agenda, um, but we will allow um, going forward. We will have um, time set aside for public comment. However, people have to notice by us by 5 p.m. the day of the meeting, um, and it is for public comment. So. Um, Michelle checked it at 502 and there there was nothing relevant. So we can actually sip along. Okay. Um, financial update. Financial update. Okay, so that's me. There is nothing. <laughs> there is nothing outstanding in the financial update. Um, we um, salaries continue to run very slightly under budget because we're still short a staff full-time staff member in the in the children's room um, and materials spending is is on track i guess as a side note um i could should also mention that um nina came by to sign both the annual report of information and statistics RS report that gets submitted that was due on the second and she signed that um, in late September. And then also at the same time I completed the financial report and state aid compliance and application form so um, we did not have to um, apply for a waiver. Um, our fiscal year 20 financial statement and compliance form. Um, which is primarily about hours and staffing and material spending um, and, and budget, um, all, all met the requirements. Um, we do not know how that will change for fiscal year 21 as COVID kind of continues on. It is impacting the library hours, um, but the more important things tend to be the budget and the material spending. So as long as we maintain our municipal appropriations requirement, we should be okay. Any questions about the money? Okay. Um, what's next? Oh, me, me again, sorry. Don't get another. Um, so um, building and space um, with regards, I'm just gonna go through the director's report, which um, you all should have in front of you, but um, we do all have our headsets um, and this, um, this is actually, um, a bigger deal than it sounds like. It sounds like it would be something simple, but Michelle will, will, will. If you want backup, you can speak to Michelle about the difficulty of of working with um, the town's phone system. Um, and um, IT was very helpful. They tested and found the correct headsets. All regular employees um, will have one. They even gave one to me, um, which is a scary thing when they have me answering the phones. Um, so that we can plug our headsets into the phones when we're using communal. Um, it's to reduce the, the transmission of the virus um, using shared equipment. So this was a really big deal. Um, we had for several months um, been using a phone tree or actually not quite several, but for a couple of months been using a phone, a phone tree, an automated phone tree, which is something Reading Public Library um, has stalwartly avoided for years. It is a point of service that we, when you call, you should get a person um, and that person can direct your call and sometimes they can answer your question right away. Um, as a temporary COVID um, accommodation, we were using phone tree where it said, if you want reference, press two, if you want children's press three, that kind of thing. Um, the staff and I feel very strongly this is not, um, this is, um, well, it's efficient technologically wise, it's not efficient in terms of getting the customer, getting the patron what they really need. So now that we have um, those headsets and we are able to cover the public service desks um, with shared equipment, we will be removing the phone tree within the next few days so that when you call the library, you will get a real life person right away, which is, um, so it's just one of our goals. So um, it's, a, it's a big deal. 
So thank you for that and thank you to IT. Early voting begins this Saturday, uh, October 17th. Um, we have worked with the town clerk. Um, she, they, she has also made some adjustments to the November 3rd voting at the field house. Um, she's working with the fire department um, and the school on that. And she's been working with the fire department and me for the early voting in the library. Basically, unless there's an uh, accessibility issue, um, um, and you need to use an elevator. Um, you will be asked to go down the stairs and enter on the school street side, sort of in the little vestibule there. You'll queue up and around on the ramp. Um, there's, there'll be little dots that we're setting up and then you'll exit from the community room fire door. Um, this essentially, uh, in essence, cut, cuts off all the voting from the rest of the library. There'll be no interaction with library staff. There'll be no confusion as the person here for browsing or voting or to use the computer. We're basically just you know, redoing all the traffic on the side. The hardest problem with that is that it is not handicap friendly. It is handicap accessible if you park on the middle six side of the building and um, walk all the way along that long sidewalk, um, but it's not terribly friendly. Um, it's accessible, but not friendly. So um, does anyone have questions about um, the early voting? Amy, is there gonna be um, somebody either from the town clerk's office or from your staff who will be at the door directing people or asking yes. people what they're coming here for? Yeah, there should be someone from the town clerks outside helping to direct traffic. Um, and that is definitely something um, that has, um, that, that she's been soliciting for. It sort of serves as a poll worker. I think she's working them in rotations and one person will be outside and they can switch out. Okay. Um, we are also going to try and put up a tent outside over the, like we can't put a tent over the stairway, but should people be queuing up, we are gonna try and have, not a tent, a canopy um, outside um, to sort of protect the space as we can in case people have to stand outside and it's raining or something like that. Oh, that's um, great it does go for two weeks. It goes right up until I think the Sunday before, um, mm -hmm. before Tuesday of voting. So it's quite a long time, but it is specific hours. And um, so um, the goal is really to help, you know, not mix the traffic. Yeah, no, that's uh, great. I just was thinking um, with the town election, people went in the front door and down the stairs. So yeah. I just was thinking people that's good. What if they did early voting last time? They might try to do it the same way. Yeah. So we'll have someone out there to direct, as well as signs. Although only about fifty percent of the population actually reads signs. <laughs> so <laughs> um, great. That many, huh? <laughs> okay. <laughs> perhaps less. Perhaps less. Um, coming from the sign, um, the sign building that has more signs in it than I think any other building. Touch this. Don't touch this. Um, but we are excited to be able to support this. We feel it's a very, very important use of our community space. So um, I also wanted to update you in the facilities has purchased a misting machine um, or misting machines, multiple of them. I've heard them referred to as Clorox machines and although it's not Clorox that's in them, but maybe Clorox was the person who originally the company started doing it. But essentially there's, um, and I have the, the chemical, um, and I will be posting that for staff. I have the chemical that goes into it, but it basically mists the whole area and it will be used for, um, in all the buildings, the town buildings, including um, the library. It is very fast acting and with it, within one minute of it landing on the surface, it is disinfected. So unlike the other stuff that they use for the spraying and wiping, which generally takes, they're supposed to let it sit for two to five minutes and then wipe it down. Um, this is an immediate thing. It does evaporate. They'll try and do it um, either very early in the morning on Thursdays before we open at one or last thing at night. The only thing that um, it's a problem with is, um, is paper. So we're not planning on using it in the workspaces. So if you picture a desk that has paper or books on it, um, open paper, I think it's, it'll be fine for the spines of the books. It can um, dampen that paper and it can get into the paper and then the paper might curl or um, have chemicals on it. So if it is used in workspaces, then we'll be given notice and we'll have to clear all of our desks off and um, then it will come through and do a, they'll do a hard contact mist, uh, surface misting. 
um, but it goes through, um, they are able to go through the building much more quickly. Um, and it is not considered a deep cleaning. I wanted to make that very clear is that should something, should this building be determined to need a deep cleaning because a staff member or we've identified someone has come into the library who is contagious and through contact tracing or whatever, um, a deep building, the deep cleaning is done and it's contracted out with the, the external contract for the cleaners. And there's a whole process that they go through and a checklist and facilities is on top of that. And all of that comes out of the facilities budget should we need a deep clean. Um, are there any other questions about sanitization of the building or services? Okay. Um, we are um, running at about, well, a little less than about 40 something percent um, of our 2019 um, circulations, which considering how little we're open and so far it's only been um, on demand, like you have to look something up, those numbers are actually quite fantastic. They're higher than many other libraries in Noble. And I expect that as now that we're open to browsing, that number will start to creep up. Um, additionally, um, we have folks looking up, uh, looking into how we can make more lists and what we call readers advisory services available via either the catalog or our website. You know, so how how can we um, make it easier for people to find what they're looking for, sort of to browse online um, if they're not comfortable coming in. So we are looking, I think it, we would like to be able to target to get our circulation um, just as sort of a, an open goal to over 50% of our normal circulation, which um, would probably be you know, in line with 50% capacity, 50% hours, or however you want to look at it, it seems like a reasonable goal to go for. So I think that might be doable um, to be able to look at 50% circulation for COVID-based services. The daily programming is just, I can't say enough about the programming staff that we have. They're absolutely amazing. Um, you know, we're basically doing a program a day and um, that is pretty amazing considering um, it's, it's, it's maybe, what, two, not quite two thirds, say, it's definitely ha less than half of our normal programming, but considering the amount of work and effort that it takes to provide something online, um, the response from both the public and participants has been great, but also the ability for um, our librarians to move things to either synchronous or asynchronous um, types of programming. So live or recorded programming has been pretty spectacular. Um, I hear, I do meet with directors from other Noble libraries every Friday. We, we do check-ins on how our services are going and, and what we're, who's doing what and the problems they're running into. And um, I just, every time I hear, I'm like, oh, wow, I can't believe you guys had a virtual poetry hour. Like, oh, you had a, you had a teen cook back to school basics, you know, just some of the programs that they're coming up with. Um, the social media programs, the videos that the children's room comes up with, it's, it's absolutely, um, it's absolutely wonderful. So um, if you've had a chance to experience any of the programming, it's great. I just want to um, say I, I haven't, um, but I'm amazed at how much um, you all are doing. And I'm amazed that you haven't flagged yet. Like, I just feel like it's we've been going for a long time right and and there was the newness and the excitement of it and everybody was into being virtual and coming up with things but it doesn't seem like your enthusiasm has diminished and i just want to call that out because i'm still amazed at how unique the programming is when i see it come across thanks that means a lot and i'll definitely pass that on to the to the programming team it is it is difficult um we do use um third-party presenters, obviously, for things like the vote, where Andrea had contracted with lecturers and facilitators. Um, but a lot of our librarians are leading a lot of this. So it, it is, um, it does take a toll. It does take more time. It does take a um, whole, there's a huge learning curve. But uh, I think it's really going, going very well. And um, they're still meeting to find, I mean, we don't see an end to virtual and remote programming. So they just keep right. plugging away. Yeah, it's great. 
um, in library reservations. Um, I'll just, I, I gave you the notes there, but basically um, we had a couple hundred people in during September, a little less than 200, which was fantastic. We're very excited about that. Um, Michelle, do you wanna give a little report? We opened up just today, you get a little on the fly report. Maybe Michelle, you could speak to how the browsing went today. Sure. Um, we, so I was the first person, we have greeters that come out there at the library um, that greet everybody who's coming in. And we had a line waiting to come in to browse. Everyone was super enthusiastic. Um, they were so happy to be back in the library, very thankful to be back in the library. Uh, we had families um, with um, a bunch of children that came in, um, a, a whole variety of um, people that came in. They uh, followed our protocol. They had their masks on. Um, they, um, it went very well. We really didn't have any issues at all. Um, it's uh, getting to um, using the program can be a little the program to book um, because it was so full you couldn't actually see all of the um, appointments but that was okay we got through it and um, I don't know everyone was super excited to be back so it was nice to see everyone both staff and the public great and does anyone have any questions about browsing to my yes. knowledge, we're the second not we're the second library in Noble to do this. Um, Beverly is also open up for browsing. They are doing browsing every other day, though. So there are different models uh, out there. Andover has a different mm -hmm. model. Uh, Uber is browsing. They have a different model. I, don't, I think Winchester might be browsing as well. So, um, also, um, just on a, another side note. Um, as I finished watching another Baker update this afternoon. Um, we do track each week on Wednesdays. So tomorrow will come out the weekly, um, I call it a scorecard, but it's, a, a, it's the color coding for levels for each community. Mm -hmm. Right now, the six towns that border Reading, five of them are either yellow or red. Um, Wakefield is still green and Reading is still green. Um, we are to look towns are supposed to be and cities are supposed to be looking at trends. So if something is a trend, so three to four weeks at red, you might consider changing, the Board of Health might consider changing some, tweaking some of the what's open and what's not kind of things. Um, uh, I would say about four weeks ago, um, all the towns around us were were green or white, which is having, having no COVID. There is definitely a noticeable rise um, or increase um, but having said that, some of these numbers are quite small. They're often one family. One family of four can make a town go, depending on the size, like a town like Linfield, it can, it can go from green to yellow to red very quickly. You can go, you can skip yellow and go right to red if it's a family of six, you know. So um, these are very, very um, sensitive numbers. That's why you don't want to make changes or judgments based on one week. You really want to look for a trend. But we do look at that um, and we will, you know, look to the Board of Health and talk to the Board of Health should Reading status change in any way. Um, just, just because, you know, these are the reason we track these numbers is very important and it does help us um, identify um, when we need to expand or contract any of our service models. Um, so we did not have our normal staff development day in the springtime. Um, as you know, we usually do a whole day and it's usually some education as well as team building. It's usually a, um, a really a great day for the staff. Um, we are not, we were not able to do that. We had been planning on doing something um, back a long time ago. We had been planning on, on um, doing something and uh, revolving through the, looking at customer service through the lens of um, race and racism. And um, as you know, that seems to have become very, very important, um, come to the forefront of professional development and continuing education um, in all sorts of areas of our daily life. So um, what was going to be sort of a, you know, a longer sort of in-person workshop, we've adapted to a three and a half hour online workshop. It's the same presenter, her name is Anika Naila, and um, she has presented to the 
Connecticut um, Library Association, um, and she was also scheduled to do a Massachusetts Library Association presentation. She's an author and educator um, and consultant, um, and she'll be um, co-facilitated, um, Deborah Gilberg, who might be related to somebody here, um, will be co-facilitating um, with Anika, um, and um, it will be structured around this book, which if you want to have a copy, I'm, I would be happy to send you all a copy. It's a little, it's a very small book. It's called um, Every Day in the USA, 30 Black Moments, and there are like little cartoons and images um, of experience, um, of looking at the experience of being Black in America and um, their discussion points. So it's all around conversation, um, trying to understand different perspectives to identify our own perspectives and biases and assumptions. So um, it should be, we're looking very much forward to that. Uh, Lisa Racine will be starting as our new children's services librarian on November 2nd. Um, we had wanted to have someone start a little bit earlier than that. However, um, Lisa is joining us from Seattle, Washington. Um, she is a certified uh, librarian. She has worked in school, library, media, and youth services in California and Washington. Right now she works for a private, um, a private library. Um, it's, I think it's more like a, I almost wanna say it's more like a charter school library, that kind of thing, um, but, not, but not quite. Um, but she's still a librarian and she's working with um, youth. She, um, it just definitely took a little time to get the logistics down for, for her and her partner to come out east. Um, so, but they have family out here and um, they wanted to move to the Boston area and she is a fantastic candidate. She was our top choice. So we're very excited to have her join us. Um, she actually has her own little site called Lisa the Librarian for her, she's done some consulting work and that's where she, she does her work. So it's very interesting. I just wanna really give a shout out also to the children's services team. Um, as you know, they always do a great job. All of our librarians and all of our staff members do a fantastic job. But um, Miss Megan uh, left us at the very beginning of July. So for July, August, and September, all the work that you've seen coming out of the children's library, the children's department programs, the PR, um, Miss Kate's dancing, Chumley, and now Chandler, all of that has been handled. Um, being down one full-time staff member. So um, that is really outstanding, um, their dedication and work um, that they've done it. Now we've, you know, we've had people filling in and helping out, but um, um, the department itself did a, a fabulous job. Lorraine, Kate, and Olivia did a fabulous job hiring. And I would also like to recognize Sean Donahue, who's the HR director of the town of Reading. We had over 30 applicants, um, so wow. just- wow going through the That's logistics. Amazing. Yeah, um, the logistics of going through them, filtering through them, setting up the interviews, setting up, you know, reaching out to, and he handles, HR handles all of the um, condolence calls, for lack of a better word, um, and all of those contacts. So um, it's, it's a tremendous job. Um, and uh, we'll be doing some hiring soon as well. Uh, finally, um, the strategic plan update. I was actually just working on this uh, a little earlier. Um, we are in the final stages. We have a vision and some core values. We're finalizing a mission. Um, I've gotten some feedback from um, the st stakeholders. It, I haven't heard that much from our library trustees, but maybe they just, the two of them that were involved with the meetings just trust us to to put down some ideas, although ideas welcome. I will be submitting something to them at least to get started uh, for the draft um, up by the end of this week. So um, I welcome all uh, areas of focus that you know you think we should work on or things that you wanna make sure that we mention. Um, the goal is to have a second draft a revised draft available for the November 13th, uh, November 10th meeting um and that means the consultants will have given me a first draft i will have provided comments and feedback and you know lots lots of comments and um what you would see would be fairly close to final but obviously up for um up for comment and feedback for a strategic plan 
Um, the strategic plan, again, is just a, a map. It's, um, it can have very specific things. There are recommendations. Um, the strategic plan is filed with the state. At any time, you can decide that a portion of the strategic plan cannot be completed or will not be completed um, because things change. Um, so it is just um, a guide. And we file that with the state. And as long as we file that uh, by the, before the end of a version of that, before the end of uh, December, we will be eligible for the grants um, for next year. So um, that's a really, you know, that's the important part. So we get the strategic plan done, we put in an action plan, and then we can do letters of intent for any of the grants um, from the MBLC um, in December and the grant rounds and application process starts in January and March and February. So um, it's pretty important that we get that done. Any questions? Wow, you guys are quiet. <laughs> Um, what's on the what's next? Amy, with all the um, college students who are doing college from home, mm -hmm. when it gets to around finals time, mm -hmm. I'm wondering if, and I know we, we, don't, we don't have a crystal balls. We don't know what things are going to be like in our, in our COVID world. But if we stay green, mm -hmm. is there a way to expand options for them to come in and have a place to take a final? Yes, there absolutely is. That's an excellent question. Um, <clears throat> there are um, several spaces. There are definitely study spaces that we have not opened up. Um, we... This, the state officially says we can have 50% capacity right now. And um, right now we don't do that full capacity. We don't do 100% of that. We, we're sort of at 75% of that right now for a variety of reasons. One of which is if you come to browse the children's room and you, you, know, you bring a couple of your kids with you, we don't go over that 100%. It also allows us to, um, make sure that staff are all set. So if we wanna have a couple staff working on a project in the picture book room and there's already six people in there, we're not gonna go over the, the eight people or seven people, I guess might be the limit in that room. So we definitely have some flexibility in some of those numbers. And we wanna have study space in our community room and the conference room. And we haven't opened up the study space in the ground floor yet. Mm -hmm. specifically because um, we definitely wanted to wait for all of that right now. The only thing going around on the ground floor right now is the browsing. Once voting is done, we're going to open up the ground floor study spaces. And again, that's going to be um, in through November and then into December. We really think that we're going to see an uptick more uh, a little closer to uh, some kids, um, some campuses are only having housing through uh, Thanksgiving. And then once they go to Thanksgiving, right. they're not coming back. So we think right. there may be an uptick in the need for study space right? at that point. And that's where we would probably start to max out some of our study areas, um, You know, adding tables here, um, adding seating there. Um, so we definitely want to do that. The other thing we could do is extend this right, you know, right now you can reserve, I think it's up to the study, the study areas are two hours. And I think you can, you can do it twice in a day. We took off a lot of the limits to let people, you know, you can only do it once a week. Well, now you can do it as many times a week as you want. Um, so we can, we can limit or expand the number of seats and the frequency of your use as these things fluctuate. Great, thank you. Yeah. I spent a lot of time with math right now, percentages <laughs> and capacities. <laughs> we, made, we made our capacity signs wipe offable. So when it says this room should have no more than X number of people, 
Um, so we can change it. So if it goes back down to 40% or they take it up to 60%, we can change that number because we know that's, that's a moving target. It's an absolutely moving target. Is there any other business? Oh, actually I do. I have another business I forgot to mention. Just so you all know, there was a records request over the weekend actually for the minutes of the that that are on table right now. Um, so someone asked the town clerk for a copy of the draft minutes. Um, the person knows that they were draft um, and they also got a copy of the packet for that meeting. And um, just through the normal records request, it goes through the town clerk, comes to me, we provide or comes to the library, we provide the information and then the town clerk distributes that information. Um, through the um, through the whatever protocols that are there. Um, so normally I try to rec let you know when there are records re requests pertaining to the library. They're generally things like how much money do people make, but that's, we haven't had one of those in a couple of years. And that's protocol to issue minutes when they're still in draft? Yes, they have to say draft on them and they do, those do say draft. Um, so it's really important that they, that they be draft. But that's, that's, we're, we're by law obligated to provide a draft version within something like 48 hours okay. of, of the meeting. Um, so we have those on hand. Going back to the thing on the notes of when I first came on, Alice, you said that Bob had used some phrase talking about the, so the funding for this position might've been accommodated cost. Okay. Yep, I think that's, so that's really just sort of a, a part of the whole budgeting process. They sort of, the way the town budget works is they take, they have a sort of a pool of money, all the money, all the, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, so they take all, you know, the, the whole revenues of the town and they say, okay, first thing we're going to do is take off the top some things that aren't related to e either the schools and we're not going to declare them to be related to the schools or the town. So they sort of take health care, health insurance, um, a few other things I say, these things are costs we just have to accommodate. Take that. So say we had a total revenue of hundred dollars. They'd say, well, $20 of the costs are these accommodated costs. We take them out. And then with the, what the town has sort of agreed to do is they take whatever's left and they always split it. I think it was 70, 30 between schools and town. And I think what he was saying is that this would probably be treated as one of those accommodated costs. It wouldn't be part of the 70, 30 split. So essentially accommodated costs are just take taken out before they do the 70-30 split. But the, then the way the budgeting was gonna work is if the, again, if the um, budget of the, of the library now is 100 and this new position is gonna cost 10, they would just give us 110. They wouldn't be cutting our current budget and it would always be that sort of additional add-on. So in that sort of accommodated costing, they would take the $10 cost of this position, put into the accommodated costs, do the 70-30 split, pull out the library's regular budget from that, then tack on 10 for this position. So that it would it would always be clear that we, we had $10 that are essentially earmarked for this position and are unrelated to our regular budget. So you could always sort of see that they're never gonna be asking us to pay for this position out of our budget because there would always be a pretty clear delineation of the money for this versus the money that came from the town you know, 30 split. That's a good oh, explanation. Alice, Andrew. you're on mute. <laughs> I, never, I never knew what accommodated costs were. I just, no. I just kept talking yeah. about no, them. There we go. Now we can hear you. But nope. I, I did remember, there, I think there was a follow-up question to him about whether it was going to be an ongoing commitment and not just for that first year. And that was, that was, clear that as you say it was going to be um you know it would continue yep. even though hope was that there would be you know grant funding as well but it it was a commitment that um good good to know yeah Thanks, that was Andrew. A little thing. the other thing i was just sort of wondering about is i know from talking to my high school senior that um people in the honor society are supposed to get volunteer hours and they're sort of hard to come by this year because so many things are shut down. Mm. And just something to think about if the library is looking for volunteers for anything 
and I have no idea what it might be, but there are definitely some volunteers out there looking for ways to be helpful. We will we will definitely note that down, Andrew, because there's a couple um, there are a couple of things that um, have kind of cropped up recently, and um, you know th there's some tasks we're struggling a little bit with staffing because some of the things that we've taken on um, just simply even having the greeter desk, you know, have some additional staffing desk point point of service. So even if we staff that with our own internal people, there might be other tasks that we can let go of that, you know, whether it's putting bags and books in bags or, you know, writing things down or standing and or maybe even helping with the greeter shift, I'm not sure. So there may be um, ways that we can um, uh, use, use folks, uh, use volunteers, um, particularly those smarty Know it all on our society kids. <laughs> um, uh, uh, just because it there's there's a lot that um, there's a, that we can always use more help right now. It's it's definitely um, one of those cases where there's a lot of um, I won't say madness, but there's a lot of hustle and bustle going on behind the scenes. Um, even though things may look very quiet, there's um, a lot of um, there's a lot of energy and it's taking a toll that's going on behind the scenes. So um, I'm sure, and honestly, it might be kind of invigorating for us to hang out with some younger people who <laughs> maybe have more hope in the world than we do. <laughs> Andrew, maybe the town clerk can use some um, volunteers with early voting. Um, yeah. She's actually been, my daughter has been doing that a couple hours a day. That's yeah. great. Um, yeah. 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 So. I would ask a question. I think I was muted when I tried to speak earlier and didn't realize it um, about the voting at the library. And did we not vote on that? Because it feels like an opportunity for the trustees to weigh in and say, yes, we, you know, appreciate the opportunity to help out with this um, during COVID. And you know, I, would, I don't recall, I don't think we did vote. And I can't remember if we even thought about it. But um, is that an option at this point? Or is it Water you can all, here. You I can thought that make, we did vote back when um, it was just, it was the local election. I thought, Amy, you yeah. presented that to us and we we supported it. Yeah, it was probably closer in July or August. No, it had to have been June or July. So. Oh, you're muted again. I don't think it's mute. I think she's not close enough to the. I don't think we did it for this national election oh. though. No. Um, and it feels as though that this is sort of a bigger deal and has more impact on the library and all, but it also is something that we can really contribute to the town at this point. So I don't know, would sort of be in favor of doing that. Maybe a statement of support for the democratic process, for supporting the democratic process of... Um, <laughs> Is I'm, I'm at a loss. I'm totally is that to me. I'm not, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, one thing we could do, one thing we could do, and I have to make sure we do this um, very correctly because we did it incorrectly last time, is we did want to move into executive session to um, discuss and go over this building security right. things. We can come back to um, um, we can come back to that if someone wants to wants to craft a statement of support while we're talking about about other things, and make a motion before we adjourn formally. So um, that's or you could work on it right now if you want to whip up a, a really wonderful statement. Um, the trustees, the library board of trustees is proud or is yeah. proud is proud to continue to support, is proud to support, continue to support the election process. The democratic process by the democratic allowing process. early voting in our facility for yes. the presidential election on November 3rd. Michelle, did you type all that in? Uh, I got, the democratic and the election process, but that's not that's not the whole thing. So the library board of trustees is proud to continue the support of the democratic process, and then by providing our facility for early voting. 
by providing our facility as a as an early voting location for the 2020 presidential election. To be providing access to our facility. Providing access to our facility. Okay. So can you read that? Yep. Uh, the Library Board of Trustees is proud to continue the support. Oh, it's proud to continue the support of the democratic process by providing access to our facility as an early voting location for the 2020 presidential election. The only thing I would change is it's the Board of Library Trustees, not the Library Board of Trustees. Okay. Can we read uh, it again? I take out the of. <laughs> In the first sentence, there. Continue. Uh, can you support. can you put can you paste that right into the chat? Actually, yeah. Mm -hmm. Please. Just about. To, <laughs> I had typed it too. I was in about the sentence. But go ahead. Oh, there. You'll see a J. Ignore the J. Okay. How about just continue supporting the democratic process? Yep, I agree with that. Mr. Proud to um, is con is proud to, I'm sorry, is proud to. Let me just is proud to continue. Is proud to continually support. Is proud, proud to, to continue. Continue Oops. supporting. Supporting, not, get, not get, the get, continue get supporting. The... Or have it to continue our support of the democratic process. Continue. Our support of it. I like that. How about that? Our but it's. It's. It's the library. Support right. of the democratic process. Yeah. Okay. All right. I. All right. The Board of Trustees is proud to continue its support of the democratic process by providing access to our facility as an early voting location for the 2020 presidential election. Sounds good. I'm going to paste in again just to make sure I got that right. Okay. Oh, why is it? Um... So we just need a motion. Oh, wait. You, oh, you wrote it. Okay. Oh. So, yeah. So then I'm going to grab okay. what you wrote, Amy. Yep. Okay. I move that we accept this language. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me think about this. Um, I move that we accept the show of support of the Board of Library Trustees in for early voting for the 2020 presidential election as stated here. I second the motion. <laughs> Sorry, can you repeat that? Um, I second the motion. No, not yeah. that part. <laughs> <laughs> Monette moves oh, yeah. to, to accept the statement supporting early voting as presented. Supporting early. I accept that one too. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. And did someone second it? Sorry. I seconded it. I don't think I Oh, I don't know. Was there a f so that Monette, Monette made the motion. I made the motion. Yeah. Yep. So we need a second. That was Cherry. Well, uh, that was Cherry. I'll, I'll, well, I'll, I'll oh my God. It. <laughs> We're really I'm so tired confused. today. <laughs> Monette made the motion. Cherry seconded it. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. I get it. And Monette needs to do the roll call. Okay. Alice, you have to come closer so we can hear you on the yes. recording. There you go. <laughs> yep. Cherry. Yes. John. Yes. Andrew. Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay. So if there's nothing further, then I'll make a motion for us to move to executive session to discuss security. So at this point, I'm going to um, stop recording.
Well, um, I think we have to vote on it before you stop recording, oh, right? You're right. You're absolutely right. Okay. Second. So Second motion. Okay. So I made the motion, Michelle, and Andrew seconded it. So now we stop the recording. No, now you vote. Oh, yeah. Okay, we're voting again. Sorry. Alice. Yes. Sherry. Yes. John. Yes. Andrew. Yes. And I'm a yes. Now I will. So we're resuming recording and resuming the regular general business meeting at 8. 27 p.m. Is that right? Yes. Okay. At 8.27 p.m. Um, and unless there's any other business. Amy, just one thing. Um, thank you for letting us know that there had been a request for the meeting minutes from the last meeting. And as a follow-up, I know that um, we were going to add the clarification around um, Bob Lalacher's comments and how that position is going to be funded. Mm -hmm. um, can we proactively, once the minutes are finalized and approved with the correct wording on that, can we proactively send those to the person who requested them? Yes, Is that something I can. we can do? Yep. That'd be great because I I'm a I don't like that it's out there that it says the li it's coming out of the library budget, and I'm I'm afraid that might come back around at some point. Right. Well, and it will ultimately be part of the budget meaning it'll be part of our assessment or whatever, but I, it's not being taken away. And I, that is something that definitely, the wording on that is very important. And I agree that it's, um, you know, we're not getting okay. rid of a child, we're not getting rid of a children's librarian and making right. that, that position. It's going exactly. to be an additional, an additional piece. Maybe we can just say something that, to the effect that it's, it's funded in a, it's funded by the town as an additional or as a separate, something or other, I don't know. Can just so people know that it, the library budget and this particular uh, position are separate. Yeah. The funding of them is, are separate. I'd almost love the minutes to, to um, send people to today's recording for Andrew's explanation because that was an excellent, <laughs> it was an excellent was. explanation on a, it was. An accommodated cost. I learned a lot. Thank you, Andrew. Um, yeah, I, I didn't understand that before either. Yeah, that was really, think... really helpful. Yeah. yeah. I was on the finance com committee when we came up with that thing. No. It's very, it was very helpful for you to explain that. Yeah. Uh, I bet most people don't know what it means. Right. But right. I, th I, think whoever, I think whoever the person was who asked for the minutes, it's going to latch on to exactly that point. Yeah, that's, I have a what feeling. I'm, that's what I'm thinking. Yep. And then going to make us think about it, I think. Maybe, maybe not. But I think we'll hear about it. Oh, there's a lot of things we're going to hear about coming soon. So. Uh oh. That doesn't sound good. No, no. It's just, it was just very interesting just heading back. I was. I, I was talking with the, the person for our workshop um, for our staff development morning. And I said to her, I said, you know, this is like three days after the election. I was like, I, I'm assuming we're all going to be walking and talking, I, you know, that, that, the, that the world will still be spinning and we will not have devolved into some sort of weird civil war or anything like that. So um, we'll, it'll be interesting. It's going to be, you know, there's just a lot of unknowns. There's just a lot of unknowns and on every every front these days. Yeah, it's a very uncertain time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Okay, is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? To adjourn. So move. A second? Second. All right, um, Cherry. Yes. Alice? I'm just going to note that Alice said yes, and we all yes. saw her say it. Thank you. John? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Okay. And all I'm right. a yes. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Take care. Good night. Yep. Bye-bye.